Brought to you by the Mutual Audio Network. Don't leave home without it. The following audio drama is rated PG-13, suggesting that children under the age of 13 should listen accompanied with an adult. Hello, strange world. Welcome to the Aldergate Papers. My name is Adrian Ward, and these singed and crumpled pages are my diary, a record of the final days of my former life. I remember almost nothing of the story they contain. All I know is that it ends with me very nearly being killed and that it may not be entirely unrelated to some of the strange things that seem to be happening lately. If there's any truth in the odd fragments of memory that I just can't seem to shake, well, there are things you deserve to know. Things that may help you to understand what's going on, and what's coming. Things are looking grim in Aldergate. Our poor hero is a prisoner in his own sub-cellar, cold and battered, and facing a choice of two profoundly miserable ends. We left him trying to sleep, in hopes that perhaps a rested mind might better face the horrors of his predicament. As we rejoin him, well, if the quality of the handwriting is any indication, it appears that things have gone from bad to simply dreadful. This is Day 5 or 6, Part 2, Entombed. It is the fifth or sixth day of the return to Watergate. There is no way to guess the time, but the place of writing is the basement of the manse of the vice-chancellor. We begin. (laughs) It's all tricks, all of it. Nip and tuck, shadows by gaslight. You think that you're the first to get this little game? What a joke. Silly little dumb show. Do they think they'll drive poor wayward brother Adrian mad with tapping and whispers? Ah! Dazzle a blind man. Poor fools. They hardly know their mark. Hmm. All's one. The fuse eternal hisses. Why ought you to shift yourself to spool it out another day, another hour? <laughs> Teach yourself rat catching, and you may be the safest ape alive. All this whirling ball of self importance. <laughs> ah, and when the ashes cool, When the cockroaches find their thumbs and manners, they'll say you planned it all. (laughs) Ha-ha! Fine curse of reputation. They'll read your profile from the pulpits. Listen, O ye misbegotten. Here beginneth the lesson. And in that time there came the clockwork butcher who saw all things, and moved in mysterious ways, that all who worked against him found no strength within their arms. For Ward beheld the path ahead, and gathered sweet fruits from out the desolate waste. And lo, when they came to seize his shining palace, they found but dust and ruin. For the treasures of Ward are neither here nor there, and cannot be taken by a mortal hand. (laughs) 
<laughs> and if you tick away down here, and comes the hour when bastards find their sinews cut, <laughs> it'll be a strange world above you while it lasts. But down here you'll endure. And if these words and bones are ever found, <sighs> they'll say you schemed it all from start to finish, down to the last drop. Or else, the last drop but one. You know you, self old boy. If this is now your world, you won't curl in a corner and let it slip away in silence. <sighs> While there's still life in you, you'll go back down again, into that pit. <laughs> 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 what else is utter darkness for, if not for diving into? <clears throat> ah, but that's a ways away, as yet. And you mustn't leave a gap in the historical record. Just think of all the dreary scholarship that the grandchildren of the remnant generation will put into Ward's last hours. No, no. Write it down. You'd left off at a dramatic juncture, down in the sub-cellar, or come with despair, trying to make your peace with a world having none of it. <sighs> You could have died down there. It was an option. And a likely one. In countless nearby laminae of the universal tapestry, you probably breathed your last beneath that trapdoor. Slumped. Hollow. Face streaked with wine and blood and sweat and tears gazing up at the yellow glow of the keyhole. Yet, even in that extremity, there remained this within you, the will that says, ah, twist it, press on. <sighs> when the best is bad, may as well stand up and do the best, what? Well, not actually stand up, but you did set about exploring your grave. Slowly, oh so painfully, you crawled away from the only light left in the world, and into the dull, dry arms of a dusty destiny that may not be quite done with you after all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, think how funny it would be if you really had the kind of foresight they credited you with. Imagine how that fortune interview would have gone. So, Mr. Ward, I'm sorry, Sir Adrian, what's next? Where do you see yourself a year from now? Oh, down a hole, most likely. Trapped in a rotting cellar, you know. Bruised and bleeding, terrified and distraught, scribbling a lot of rambling nonsense, and more or less waiting to die. <laughs> oh, but you didn't die, did you? Not quite, not yet. No, you crept forward, bit by bit, until the boards began to creak beneath your knees. You wondered how that petrified sawdust could have caught you in the first place. And then you realized, though the floor itself is more or less done for, the beams beneath must still be sound. Returning to the keyhole, you struck out perpendicular to the boards. Sure enough, 
all seemed firm and solid. You crawled on. And on. From time to time, something would shuffle or whisper, far in the distance, or just behind your ear, and you would stop, and wait, burrow into your own invisibility. Nobody here but us dry, forgotten bones. And, after an eternity or two, you'd begin to crawl again. <sighs> then, as before, the world disappeared under your hands. Not broken boards this time, however, but another trap door, and no more than a few dozen feet from ground zero of your crash landing. You felt out its perimeter, trying not to breathe the sickly, warmish exhalation rising from below. Then, hating the idea with every fiber of your being, you stuck your arm down through the hole. You reached into the abyss for... Ugh. Well, you weren't quite sure what you expected to find, but what you did find was... another bloody ladder. <laughs> A tall, new, quite nice aluminium extension ladder. It clattered noisily when your hand struck against it, and you nearly lost it down the pit in your excitement. You seized the thing, and throwing caution to the wind, staggered to your feet. You dragged it up from the depths with the entirely unnecessary strength of desperation, and naturally wound up flat on your back once more, with the ladder on top of you. <sighs> you lay there, hugging it. The whole world seemed suddenly brighter, and looked brighter, in fact, because you'd finally given your eyes a break from staring at that keyhole. You couldn't really see, not as such, but you could make out the general shape of your surroundings. <sighs> it's a big place, this sub-cellar of yours. Hard to guess just how big. It stretched off into the invisible distance in all directions. You could only make out the dimmest details. Here, the thick stone piles that have held up the manse all these centuries. There, the dark gaps in the floor where bits had decided they weren't going to be held up any longer. And there, just a few feet from where you lay, a shape, vague and indistinct. Looming above you. Had it been there before? You hadn't seen it. Though, of course, you hadn't not seen it either. In an instant, the horror came rushing back. You lay, breathing at it, clutching your ladder for protection. You must have spent a full minute, or two, or ten, just staring at the sudden thing. An anvil chorus of trapped things exploded all around you, and you endured an ecstasy of misery as you tried to listen over their noise. <sighs> Nothing happened. Silence returned, and with it. Shame. You steeled yourself, scooched closer to the formless shadow, reached out a tentative hand to touch it. <laughs> Congratulations, self. To your growing phobia collection, you can now add large heap of crumpled paper. 
so, not much more to be said, really. You picked yourself up and got on with the business of escaping. With a heave, you shoved your new ladder against the trap door and flipped it open. You braced its feet, picked sticky bits of wine bottle off your unshod heel, and climbed to freedom. Well, not freedom as such, obviously. You're still here in the basement. And here you shall stay, evidently, because the blighter who stole your ladder shut the door as well. For reasons that you can't begin to fathom, it's got a coded electronic lock on this side. Weird thing. It's almost homemade. The buttons are actually little knobs that you can pull as well as push. Huh. No telling what mad Sir Reggie wanted with the twisting thing. But, well, you haven't the code. It's taken a supreme effort of will on your part not to just kick the dashed door right off its hinges. But you're already down a hand. No sense maiming any other appendages. You flirted with the idea of fetching up the ladder for use as a blunt object, but even if you manage to work it through the trap door and up the cellar stairs, you can't see it making much of a battering ram. The best you could hope for would be a broken ladder and the world's most needlessly sturdy basement door in near-mint condition. <sighs> so, here you are. You've had your supper. Bland, perhaps, but high in fiber. You've had a drink and a nap, and now you have a headache and a chill. It really is dreadfully cold down here. You ought to get up, get the blood flowing. A few laps of the basement ought to warm you up, if you can avoid catching your toes in too many rat traps. Hmm. Then again, a dose of healthful exercise might not be the best plan for a chap who doesn't know where his next calorie is coming from. What's it like to starve to death, do you suppose? <clears throat> Here now, don't be morbid. You've been awfully confrontational with your own mortality these past few days. Let the poor thing alone. <laughs> it's a funny thing. Nobody ever really talks about starvation as a way of dying. Suppose it's gone out of style these days. In your social circle, at least. Fire, now. Fire's supposed to be dreadful. Water's apparently quite nice, all things considered. Although, when you tried it, you certainly didn't see the appeal. <sighs> of course, if you do get out of this, you've got a special death all your own to look forward to. If Black Jack Hoborn gets his way, you're probably looking at a date with an Osmeridium slug lobbed round the curvature from over international waters. Hard to fret about that. That's not like anything at all. Instantaneous. <sighs> burning. Now, burning's not instantaneous, but it is pretty quick. Surely... Probably depends how it's done, but let's call it four minutes. Awful minutes, to be sure, but only about four of them. Drowning's quicker than that, once you give up and decide to play along. But starvation, now, that does take time. <sighs> it's got to be beastly the general wasting away aspect. Not nice at all. And you know, the worst bit of starving, which you don't really get with the other options, is that you're at leisure to really appreciate it. It doesn't just happen to you. There's psychology involved. Half the suffering you probably do to yourself. Yes. And that makes it even worse, doesn't it? 
You've got to choose your own adventure. <sighs> what will the history books say? How was the clockwork butcher when they found him? Sitting quietly, folded into the lotus with hands on knees, a crinkle of ineffable humor still visible upon his withered cheek. Think you can manage that? <sighs> or are you the type to go out howling, clawing at the door with the bloody shreds where your fingernails used to be? Yeah. Just how well do you want to know yourself, eh, self? No, no, you've got to get... Ah, there's a break here. We rejoin our... <laughs> our hero a few unproductive minutes later. Ahem. <clears throat> Well, that doesn't seem to have accomplished much, but you'd have had to try it eventually. You won't be trying it again for a bit at any rate. Just about screamed your larynx out, and your throat dries the Sahara. No response, of course. Though for a moment there you were sure you heard someone. You heard something. <sighs> Perhaps not. Perhaps it was all in your head. Could have been between your ears. Or inside them. It's echoey work screaming in this basement. Or perhaps it was the pipes again. They can be awfully noisy. Not just at the moment, but every so often they'll set to rattling like bilio. Rats, do you suppose? No, that's absurd. Rats in the pipes? Well, Aldergate is a city built upon itself. Accretions upon accretions, the flesh of the new city growing on the bones of the old. Sir Reggie tucked his lovely new plumbing into the embrace of the old, and that's probably wrapped around the stuff that came before, right back to Roman lead. The new works tirelessly and efficiently, the new always does, but the old still remains, vacant, dry, and hollow. What runs in the old, forgotten veins of Aldergate? <sighs> you hope it's rats. You quite like rats. They're clever, and not so dirty as you might think. Bell's had one for a bit, called it Pierpont. She took it to Sundance, and it ate her lipsticks, then chewed through her bag and escaped. You liked Pierpont. Perhaps you could befriend his English cousins. Organize them, you know. Rally them to your cause. Get them to gnaw through the door for you. <laughs> With your luck, they just gnaw through the cable that feeds the code lock and trap you in here permanently. Wait a moment. <sighs> no, never mind. No good. It was a good thought, but the lock's wired into the wall. Ha! Huh. But, suppose the power were cut. What happens then? Does this lock fail open or closed? Hmm. Closed, obviously. Must do. It's a lock. As anybody could just... Wait a moment. The fuse box is down in the cellar. If the lock failed shut, you'd have to break the door down every time you blew a fuse. And you know that's not the case, because you came down here yourself, during the blackout that night you arrived. Hmm. But the door was open, then. Wasn't it? That's... Uh, yeah, you... Yes. Yes, you just stepped right through. 
by accident, fell down the stairs. Certainly your finest moment. Hmm. But then... Yes, yes, you distinctly remember closing the door behind you when you came back up. Ah, that didn't stop the handy gal who came round after the blackout to lie in wait here so she could pop out and give you a heart attack. Huh. Is that your answer? Nip back down to the cellar, throw the breakers, cut the power, and bid cheerio to Durance Vile? Seems pretty sound, doesn't it? Yes. You're in no state to be doing this sort of reality-based thinking, but... Yes. Yes. Well then, run along. Go on. Oh, come now. Back up, Silver boy. Why should you be nervous now? You'll have to make it back up here in the dark, but you can manage. As long as you make sure there aren't any more holes in the floor to fall through, you'll be just fine. Dandy, even. Off you go. Uh -huh. Ah, we break off again at this point and resume on the next page. My handwriting had been improving steadily. Now it hits an all-time low. <sighs> Back again. Just darkness now. Darkness and emptiness and a little green glow from behind the buttons. Little bastard has a battery. <laughs> and isn't it just like a bastard, too? Ever the humble gatekeeper. Have to know the code. Nobody enters the promised land except through us. And once you get there, you find where all there is. Pay heed to the unheard voice. Come forth and receive your birthright. Come fifth and win a toaster oven. <sighs> you ought to go back down and reset everything. <sighs> Twist it all. It hardly seems worthwhile. Go all the way back down there, and in the dark this time. Are you sure you could even find the fuse box? Probably blunder right back down the trap. You've a ladder now, but a fat lot of good that will do if you break your neck. <sighs> no. Come on. You can't just sit about in the dark. Oh no. Seems you can. Just look at you doing it. Not that there's much to look at. <sighs> Listen. There's the rats again. The rats in the pipes. If that's what they are. Rattling, rattling rats. Oh, just get on with it. You'll go eventually, and when you do, you'll wish you'd already done it. But you don't want to go. You don't want to go back down there. Not again. You wish you hadn't left the ladder there. You wish you hadn't left the trap door open. Anybody could come up from below. They could be right here with you now. You couldn't see them. Hush. There it is. 
hiding under your breath, sliding under the scratch, scratch, scratch of your pen. That's the horror, come to say hello again. The unnameable, waiting everywhere you cannot see. And that's everywhere now. It's on your skin, crawling in your hair. Don't look at the light, the little green glow. <laughs> That's the way we do it. Keep them staring at the lock. That's what makes the prison. No, don't look at it, or you won't see anything else. Do you want to see it? <laughs> it's rather thick, don't you think? Asking one poor fellow to be both Antigone and Oedipus. Oh, blinded princes all. <laughs> you silly, fabricated fool. A day without coffee and email, and you can't work out who you are. Has it been three days yet? As if it made a difference at this point. You can't even see the pen in your hand. Who knows whose diary you're writing? Suppose you're not even here. Nothing. Nothing. Suppose you're nothing at all. Je suis le ténèbre. Why did you have to say that? And so loud. Why? Did you have to say that? Why did you have to say that? Did you say it? Somebody said it. <laughs> oh, my poor self. This is a new sort of madness. The new old-fashioned sort. Not a little sneaker brain hiding in corners and jumping out at you. No, this is the grand old howling, hid in the marrow bones from times long passed away. This is the darkness that you carry with you. That's a face, white and eyeless, there by the stairs, a pale mask hanging in the air. <sighs> it's just a problem. You can... Well then, there ends the page, and on that cheerful note, there ends this section of the diary. It is not, however, the last section. Somehow, despite everything, it appears that our hero's story carries on. How? Well, we shall just have to see, shan't we? Join me every second Sunday at thealdergatepapers.com. Find the Aldergate Papers on Apple Podcasts as well. And spread the word, won't you? This may be my story, 
but I fear that it's likely to become everybody's problem. Until next time, I am and shall remain your humble servant, Adrian Ward. You're listening to Tuesday Terrors on the Mutual Audio Network. Tomorrow is our weekly anthology for science fiction and fantasy with Wednesday Wonders. Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for every day of amazing audio or find the Wednesday Wonders feed in your favorite podcast players. The Mutual Audio Drama Network, where we listen and imagine together.